Hey, this is Tim with Studio 4 Media, and today we're going to take a look at how to create an asteroid belt or an asteroid field using only these two objects right here. Um, to get the project file, go over to our website, studio4media.com, and then take a look at our blog, and you'll be able to follow along that way. Basically, all I have is a couple asteroids here in this scene. They're not very high detailed. If I render this out, you can see for yourselves, but uh, they're going to get the job done. So uh, over here in my outliner, you can see that I have my asteroids in a group. And then beneath them I have the name Asteroid 1 and Asteroid 2. And that's how I have my scene set up if you want to create your own and, and follow along that way as well. So I'm going to zoom out here and you can see that I have these asteroids and they're, they're pretty small. They are scaled down quite a bit. And uh, there's a reason for that and I'll get to that later. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my Polygons tab, create this torus, and I'm just going to scale it up. There we have it. Now for those of you, for some reason, if you have your polygon primitives and your interactive creation turned off, if you create your tor torus, and if you try to scale it, it's going to scale up really fat. And you want it to be skinny like this one, so to fix that, go to your channel box, go down to your poly torus options, and then the section radius, you can just change that to uh, a lower value, and it'll, it'll do that for you. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and uh, go back to my other uh, polygon torus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, make sure I'm in my Dynamics uh, tab here, and go to Particles, Emit from Object, I'm going to go to the Option box here. And I'll just reset it to the, the default. So this is the default here. Uh, I'm going to change my emitter type to Surface. And I'll leave it at 100 particles for now per second, and I'll change my speed to 0.5. Hit Create. Now when I push Play, it might be hard to see but there are some particles coming off of this torus, and I'm going to go ahead and actually just select my torus, push Control H on the keyboard to hide them, and uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. I got some particles that are now spawning in that uh, in that formation of where the torus was. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and open up my asteroid uh, group here, select asteroid number one, shift select asteroid number two, and then Control select the particles. And now I can go up here to my particles and then sit, look at the instancer here. And I'll just go to the options real quick and make sure that that tool is reset. And then just hit create. And now you can see that each one of these particles is actually, actually instancing from this, um, these objects and it's being duplicated. But if you look closely, you can tell that it's actually just one of the asteroids that is being duplicated over and over again. I don't have both of them, I just have one of them. And we're going to fix that right now. So I'm going to go to my attribute editor and go under my particle shape, scroll down, and we're going to have to do some um, some expressions here. So underneath my add dynamic attributes, I'm going to go to general, and I'm going to create a new attribute, and this name is going to be custom. Um, it'll be our custom index because it's going to be a random value, and we're going to want to make it a float and that'll be good. Hit OK. And now you can see we have our custom index that showed up right here underneath our per particle array attributes. So we can right click on that, go to creation expression, and now we can make our expression. So I'm going to highlight the name right here, and you can copy and paste it and bring it down here, or you can just middle mouse click and uh, bring it down here and it'll pull up that way. And I'm going to write a quick expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit a space and hit equals. So this shape equals rand, and that's for random. Then I'm going to do 0 um, to 1.99, and I'm going to close that out. So, so what we just said here is that um, the first object over here, asteroid 1, Maya actually considers that as 0. So that's the object 0. And my second object is object 1. But in order for it to be a full value, it has to be 1.99. So let's say you had four objects in your scene. You're going to go from 0 to 3.99. Um, so it's a little bit confusing, but hopefully uh, that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing your own and you're not, using, not following along with uh, ours, make sure that for however many you have in your scene, uh, you just start at 0 and then count from there. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So there we go, I have that set up. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And now we have our expression created right here. 
Uh, but nothing's going to happen yet. Nothing's changed because we have to go up here and do a couple different things. So I'm going to go up here underneath my instancer. I think by default this button is uh, actually unchecked. It says allow all data types. We want to actually turn that on, make sure that's uh, checked. Then we can scroll down and underneath our object index we're going to scroll down to the very bottom and we're going to see right there our custom index. So now that we have that set up let's go ahead and back it up and play again and now you're going to notice if I zoom in here that we do have actually both of our objects spawning. So that worked out great. But as you can see here our objects are um, the exact same scale and they're the exact same position and so it looks really fake and it's obvious that we're only using two objects in order for uh, to make this this belt or this field. So we're gonna we're gonna mix this up just a little bit and um, we're going to create some more expressions. So I'm gonna go back into the attribute editor, scroll down and get my um, expression editor back up by right clicking on my custom index and go into creation expression. And so we have it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the rotation first. So I'm going to hit enter a couple times. And um, before we can actually create an expression, we have to make sure we add our attribute. So I'm going to go over here to my add dynamic attribute. Just hit general. And I want this name to be custom rotation. So there we go, custom rotation. Now instead of this being a float, I want to make this actually a vector. Because we want to rotate in all three dimensions, x, y, and z. So it needs to be a vector and I hit OK. And now we are ready to write an expression. And so we're going to say custom rotation. Uh, make sure that's a capital R. Rotation um, equals, and we're going to do these uh, symbols right here. If you can't find it, it's a shift comma comma and shift period period on your keyboard. And uh, that'll pull those up. So shift comma comma and then we'll do rand and we'll go 0 to 360, so 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Put that uh, the parentheses back there. Now I'll do shift, period, period, and we'll do a semicolon. So what this is saying is the custom rotation is going to randomize between a value of 0 and a value of 360 degrees. And I actually need to make three of these because we want it to be random in X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to highlight this, hit copy, put a comma here, then paste, a comma, and paste. So now we have our custom rotation is randomizing 0 to 360 degrees in the X, the Y, and the Z, and then these here close out our expression. So that is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit so it makes the changes, and then I'm going to pull this off to the side, go back up here, to our rotation, underneath our rotation options, and scroll down until I find our custom rotation. Now if I back this up and play it again, you're going to see that these objects are now being rotated and are rotated at different intervals. And that helps out a ton with it looking like it's actually uh, different rocks and different, uh, different asteroids in there. Uh, but we can do a little bit better. We can also change the scale because right now they're all the exact same scale So that gives it away that it's only two objects being instance. So let's go ahead and uh, mess around with the scale now So I'm going to pull this back over and go to our attribute editor Scroll down and add another attribute So we'll go to general and we'll call this one custom scale And this is going to be a vector as well because we want it to scale in X Y and Z so that's good to go. And go back to my expression editor. Again, if you if you accidentally close out of your expression editor, you can get to it again, but just by right clicking on your custom index, go into creation expression, and that'll pull that up for you. Um, so in our expression editor, we're gonna write another expression. We're gonna go ahead and say, um, the first one we wanna write is float. And then we're gonna do a dollar sign and do scale uniform equals rand and I'm going to do a random value of 0.2 to the value of 2 and then do my semicolon and um, then I'm going to hit enter 
And then I'm going to use my custom scale attribute I just made. So custom scale equals, we're doing that shift, comma, comma again, and equals the dollar sign scale uniform that we just created up here. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make this um, have it three times as well for our x, y, and z. And I'll explain this a little bit better after I'm done doing it. So x, y, and z. So there's scale uniform one, two, three. And then we'll do shift, period, period, and semicolon in that. So what we just did here is we created a float expression. So we're, we're naming it um, scale uniform by putting that dollar sign in front of it. And we're saying that uh, the scale uniform equals a randomness value of 0.2 to 2. So it's going to scale it up uh, in a uniform direction. And the reason why we're doing it this way instead of just doing a, an equal value in here is because if we were to just put a value in here, um, let's say instead of doing that scale uniform, we were just going to put a value of like 1 to 4, like that. It would scale it up, but it would scale it up in a really weird way. And um, it would scale on the Z really randomly, scale on the X randomly, scale on the Y randomly. And then you'd have a really awkward looking shapes and really elongated. And uh, it wouldn't look very realistic like actual rocks. So by doing it this way, we're actually scaling everything uniformly, but they're going to be different sizes. So that's why we don't do it this way. And so, of course, we have to have that scale uniform in our X, our Y, and our Z. And that's why we have three of them. And that is the end of our expression. So go ahead and hit Edit to make those changes. Now back over in our particle shape, we'll go up to our scale in our general options. Go down to our custom scale. And then we'll back this up and push play. And you can see right away that we have um, the scaling is a lot different. And the rotation is being randomized. You have some small ones here, got some big ones over here. So we know that everything is working properly, and it all looks uh, looks really good. So what we can do now is we can play around with this a little bit. The cool part about this is now that we have our expressions written and our objects are being instanced correctly, we can go to our attribute editor, we can go to our emitter, and we can make changes to our emitter. And whatever changes we make actually will just affect the way our field looks. So I'm going to scroll down here. I might increase the, the particles per second to say a value of 200. And then I'm going to increase the max distance up to a value of 7. And you'll see what that does here. So I'm going to hit play. And right away you can notice that we have a cool looking asteroid field. And uh, if I zoom in here and render this out, yeah, this looks really cool. All of a sudden we have an awesome looking asteroid field. And it's almost impossible to tell that we have made this just by you know instancing or, or copying two objects because of the way we randomized it so this looks awesome and uh, you know this is a this is a great effect and a great look and if you want to um, if you want to get a look that's not so much a field like this and actually like rings like in the example picture uh, you can do that real simply as well you can uh, highlight your your uh, emitter here and let's put this max distance back down to zero. And let's go to our speed, turn that to a value of 0.2. Speed random to a value of 0.2. And let's see what that looks like. So they're staying in this ring right here. And uh, it, it looks really cool because now they're just forming a ring. And you can even put a planet, you know, in the in the center there instead of having our instance objects. In fact, we can just go ahead and hide these Control H. That way, we don't have to worry about seeing them. But uh, yeah, all of a sudden we have some sweet looking rings, and uh, it was super simple. And these look a little bit, a uh, little bit like the rocks are too big and the ring is really small. So what we can do is we can actually I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to unhide those uh, real quick. So go to display show selected because I selected them here in the outliner and if we scale these down or up you're gonna notice right away that it's gonna you know immediately affect our um, instance particles so I'm gonna scale these down and maybe down even a little bit more and I'm going to select my emitter and now I can crank up 
this uh, rate per second to a value of like say a thousand and let's see what that looks like so now we got these rings here and this is looking really sweet because they're a little bit smaller but as you zoom in you can see that they're actually big asteroids and so when we render this out it's a more believable effect of having those those uh, bunch of asteroids together creating this ring here and this is looking pretty sweet if, you know the longer we play it the more particles spawn and the better it looks so anyway this is uh this is how you get that effect and of course you can even bump up your um, your rate per second here to say value of 2000 and then you really get a really dense asteroid field there so anyway uh, you can duplicate this ring and have multiple rings at once you can flatten you know the uh, the original um, torus we started with so it's not so bulbous on the ends you could do so many different things with this but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial this is pretty much it just a uh, really simple instancing objects is one of the coolest ways to create effects you can do so many things with it this is just one small option uh, that you can do with it so hopefully you guys like this tutorial we're gonna have a bunch more free tutorials coming out and as always take a look at the website a lot of really cool things on there uh, for our subscribers and uh, yeah I'll see you guys on the next tutorial